and God of glory. M594. <laughs> God, have mercy. 
in us all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Standing, we move to the inventory on page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Let us say together the Venite, found on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the heavens of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our appointed song this morning is number 99, which is found on pages 728 and 729 of the Book of Common Prayer. That is Psalm 99, found on pages 728. Please respond by half verse. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He is his throne and the mountain cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is he high is above all people. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O oh, mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They call upon the Lord at the end. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They gave his testimonies and the freedom he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who gave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. We now say the Gloria from page 84. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to you, I will be, to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. 
And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able and join me in saying Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah. This begins on page 87 in the Book of Common Prayer, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned on upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom and shrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear before you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Your gates will always be open, by day or night, and they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin and destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, by night you will not be the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first epistle to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of, these, of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Please stand and join me in saying Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, found beginning on page 93 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Song to the Lamb, Canticle 18, page 93. <clears throat> Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is. And by your will they were created and had their being. And yours by right, the land of the slain. For you were blood, you were redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worshipped and praised, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Please be seated. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. 
Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Following the service today, we will have St. Thomas talk. You also notice announcements in the bulletin. We'll cover anything needed to be said then. Our offertory hymn is number 488, Be Thou My Vision. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring him offerings, and come into his courts. <laughs> I seek to speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When I went before the Commission on Ministry last November, Father John Pollock, then chair of the Commission, asked me in one of the sessions if I could provide a line of scripture or two that I might offer if I were preaching a stewardship sermon. Honestly, despite a baddest youth, I have never been one for Bible verses, but two thoughts flashed through my mind. First, I thought of the very gospel we had today. My initial inclination was to say, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and render unto God the things that are God. But my second thought was, well, I'm not going to be preaching a sermon like that anytime soon. I mean, a stewardship sermon is supposed to be given by an ordained priest who's committed to a specific parish coming at the time of budget preparation after he's been hired to serve as clergy of the church. Yet here we are. So technically, our readings today are not marked directly as lessons on stewardship, but it seems hard to believe that this proper lands here, following when it does in the secular calendar, without those who shaped the lectionary having thought that people needed to be reminded to give to God those things that are God's. These readings could be placed elsewhere in our year, even in this season of ordinary time, but Proper 24 will always fall in the range of this week during October, a month often marked with church pledge drives. You'll be getting something in the mail soon from us, by the way. <laughs> However, one might not actually interpret this reminder as a way to honor Caesar and the Almighty, respectively. After nine weeks of parable lessons, this passage from Matthew offers what does seem to be a clear directive from Jesus. Things of, the secular, things of the material and secular world belong to that world. 
pay taxes to the state. Things of the spiritual world belong to that world, pay tributes to God. And so we use that idea as a reminder both to be good citizens in the world, paying our taxes to the emperor and, and of the world, using our talents for and in the name of God. For us to have a society in which the church can exist, and for us to be the church in order to help that society, we need both. There is no doubt that the emperor and God should receive what they deserve and return their investments. And following this, as we most, as we most often interpret it, allows for a tidy reminder of both our civic and churchly duties. However, we might make sure we do not let that most common interpretation mislead the gospel's true meaning. When we keep the reading on these simple lines, we risk falling into a trap just as the Pharisees try to trap Jesus. Yes, we should pay our taxes and our tithes, but Jesus' directions are not simply accounting reminders. The Pharisees' question comes from a desire to disrupt the ministry which threatened them. They sought to trick that troublemaker from Nazareth with their question. Look at the platitudes they use as they start talking to him. We know that you're sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. You do not regard people with partiality. The Pharisees seek to secure their footing before stepping out onto their ledge for entrapment. We know that discussing money and religion can be tricky, so they ask Jesus a question about both. They are not hoping for a deft answer that threads the needle between offering taxes legally to the emperor and ignoring earthly expectations. They are hoping when they bring Christ to Denarius, that he fumbles his response and falls into their trap. That coin and its engravings represent their trick. If Jesus speaks against the emperor, they have it. And that trap is a legal one that they set based on an earthly coin as they seek to use the mortal world to disrupt the heavenly kingdom Christ is promising. As Jesus preaches and shares the rewards which are to come when we give to God those things that are God's, his dramatic and dynamic view of a new order threatens the Pharisees. He knows and lets them know that their trap fails. Jesus' answer is not simply a clever response to avoid their trap, however. He is actually reminding the Pharisees that he is not preaching of earthly rewards. If we serve a living and true God, our service and our investment in God is for a heaven-shaped return. That return moves us away from the sort of legalistic trappings in which the Pharisees engage. It reshapes and restructures what it means to be an emperor or a subject of the empire. We think of the kingdom of heaven, and vocabulary limitations paint the picture of a heavenly throne that is an earthly seat upon which that king or emperor sits. The Lord is king, let the people tremble, he is enthroned upon the cherubim. And so we read responsibly in the psalm this morning. But that is because we seek comfortable and clear metaphors to conceive of the divine. God is a mighty king, lover of justice, and we envision in a figure matching earthly and literal versions of a monarch. But God's kingdom is not earthly, nor do our visions of that kingdom need to be. When Jesus separates that which is given to the emperor and that which is given to God, he is not merely proposing columns in a ledger or in QuickBooks, covering taxes versus charitable contributions. Jesus' teaching has been about a new type of kingdom, and Jesus actually is separating the present and future when he answers the Pharisees. When we give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, we are giving of and to the world. When we give to God the things that are God's, we are celebrating the forthcoming heavenly kingdom, one that transforms this world and us within it. Make no mistake, stewardship is vital. It is vital for it provides the church with the means to make that transformation possible. We take from within these walls and go into that which seems to belong to the emperor. But that is so that we can help the world become a place that's a bit more like the transformative kingdom of God. We leave these walls and proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. We leave these walls and seek and serve Christ in all persons as we love our neighbors as ourselves. We leave these walls and strive for justice and peace among all people as we respect the dignity of every human being. We leave these walls and fully recognize that what is important is not what is said within them on Sunday, what we do outside of them on Monday and beyond. We can always render unto Caesar for we are in that empire, but our calling is to transform that empire one encounter at a time, and we do so by rendering unto God. The Pharisees are frustrated by Jesus' answer, for it avoids and escapes the trap they hope to set. The most common take on this gospel episode can frustrate me as well, 
or it has that feeling of a non-answer. As I consider if I am giving all of my gifts to the church, that frustration can remain, but only because I realize far too often I fall short in that regard. But even with that frustration, I do not tire my efforts, tempting though it often is. The need to remake the earthly kingdom into a heavenly one is an empowering and energizing one. We all know the strength from carrying outreach with us to others when we leave these walls, and the encounters, big and small, but from our personal experience, most often those that actually are small and individual can feel the most profound, are what transform us from living to Caesar to living for God. In my session with the Commission on Ministry, I did offer to Dr. Pollock and his colleagues one line of scripture which I do have memorized. This is Galatians 6, 9. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. Getting to God what belongs to God is doing what is right. Carrying forth in the name of God is doing what is right. Sharing the love of Christ is doing what is right. We leave these walls and we serve others, and that is doing what is right. May we always render as we should. Amen. Standing as you are able, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 96. I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under conscious Pilate, was crucified by God and his spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. It will not come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continuing with the prayers on page 97. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Using suffrages D. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we do not trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to, you, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, 
through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your people, of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We only pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, your servant Colin as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon Will and Ashlyn and Edward and Megan, it's a good week for the Blanchard family, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We ask prayers for all saints Southern Shores, the Reverend Cindy Simpson, Rector. We pray for all our prayer list and those we hold in our hearts. We pray for peace in Ukraine and the Middle East. I ask now your intercessions. I the silent we are allowed. Please join with me now in the praying of the general thanksgiving as found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you only thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Lord. to him with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 544, Jesus Shall Reign Where'er the Sun. It's hymn 544. 